Hello and bonjour. We are back in Versailles at the Univem Living Museum of Historic Military Vehicles because, as you've just read in the title of the video, there is some slightly dramatic news. Unfortunately, the old warehouse building here has been scheduled for demolition and the museum have been given six months to try and find a new home for their collection of rare and lovingly preserved combat vehicles, mostly from World War II. But wait, Tim, isn't that where the aero trains are? Yes, exactly. Last time I came here, just over a year ago, it was because I was trying to track down the legendary French aero trains, the experimental jet-propelled hover trains from the 1960s that smashed the world speed record for rail-guided vehicles at the time. And I discovered that the two original test vehicles survive, and they've been kept in the back of this warehouse for the last 25 years. The only reason they're here is because Univem kindly offered to host them after they were thrown out of their previous home. But now Univem are being chucked out too. So what's going on? And who are Univem anyway? Ben moi, je m'appelle Christophe Ivran, je suis le président de l'association Univem, avec laquelle on s'occupe justement de la restauration de tout ce fabuleux patrimoine. On a à peu près une cinquantaine de cartes grises. Alors, on a fait une petite estimation entre tout ce qu'on a là, on est quand même à financièrement un peu plus de 3 millions d'euros de patrimoine. Ah oui, c'est quand même pas n'importe quoi. Et nous, notre but, c'est de faire partager. Euh, le... C'est le devoir de mémoire et le devoir d'essayer de faire comprendre aux gens à quoi a servi tout ce matériel. Oui. So we'll get to the aero trains in a moment, but the whole collection of historic military vehicles is being thrown out too, and there is some serious history here. This half track, for example, was involved in the Spanish resistance against General Franco, and then, perhaps more importantly for the French, it was one of the first friendly vehicles to arrive in Paris during the liberation in 1944. And the best thing is, everything you see here still works. The volunteers constantly take these things out for test drives around the local area. They don't just preserve vehicles here, they're keeping them alive. L'idée c'est que les véhicules on puisse les faire fonctionner, on puisse faire monter des gens dedans et on puisse leur faire comprendre à quoi ils ont servi. On accueille des visiteurs constamment toute l'année et on demande jamais d'argent. Il y a des il y en a qui nous font des dons. On est un musée bénévole, on va dire qui est un petit peu notre problème parce qu'on aurait peut-être encaissé de l'argent depuis longtemps on aurait oui, peut-être que c'est suffisant pour trouver des locaux maintenant. Ouais. And this really is the problem because the warehouse does not belong to Univem. We're actually on an active military site here and the building ultimately belongs to the French army. Which was fine until the French government decided it wanted to free up some of the land around here as part of an enormous redevelopment project going on in the Paris region at the moment called Grand Paris. D'accord. Et c'est l'armée qui vous... Alors c'est l'armée qui... J'ai tort ou... <rire> Oui, c'est un peu ça aussi. On est hébergé par la section technique de l'armée de terre. Et la section technique de l'armée de terre, c'est tout ce qu'il y a autour ici. Et ils ont une partie où Grand Paris les exproprie parce qu'ils ont besoin de la surface. Ici, ils sont obligés, nous, de nous exproprier pour pouvoir reconstruire ces bâtiments. D'accord. On est des dommages collatéraux en réalité. Oui. But if Univem are being thrown out, what does that mean for the aero trains? They belong to another voluntary group called Les Amis de Jean Bertin, who don't have a building of their own to put them in. So where are they going to go? Alors pour les aéro trains, dans le principe là, eux, ils font de la recherche aussi. Alors ils ont besoin de beaucoup moins de surface, donc c'est un peu plus simple. Et on a aussi quelques pistes éventuellement où pour les mettre dans d'autres musées. Ou alors ils nous suivent tout simplement nous et l'idée à la base c'était surtout de venir avec nous et de créer vraiment un, un, petit, un petit pôle aérotrain qui serait visitable aussi et ouvert au public aussi mais constamment. So the dream is to find a permanent home somewhere near where they are now on the west side of Paris, symbolically on the same historic route that some of these vehicles took when they were on their way to liberate the city in 1944. But right now, really anything will do. Univem have been given until June to try and find at least a temporary solution, which is not much time when you're looking for somewhere to put 50 historic military vehicles and a couple of aero trains. Now obviously, part of the reason I'm making this video is because I want to try and help them, so I'll be donating half of my YouTube ad revenue from this episode to the search for a new place. And I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, so please support the causes that you need to support first, but if you'd like to give them an extra little boost, here are three other ways you can help. 
Firstly, there's an official petition you can sign over on change.org, and the more people who sign that, the more visibility the story gets. But if you'd like to help financially, it's best to use this link, and that makes sure your donation goes straight to Univem. And thirdly, it's a long shot, but if any of you watching this happen to own a big empty French building, or you know a person or a business who might be able to help, please do get in touch with Univem directly. I'll put all of these links in the description below. And don't worry if you don't have a spare warehouse lying around, I'll try and keep you updated with the story anyway, and hopefully I'll be able to bring you some good news in the future. But for now, from this incredible collection of vehicles, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon.